Hello, welcome. I'm a few minutes behind today. Uh, I kept getting some texts and messages and um, as you heard my dog. So um, anyhow, welcome to birthday class number three. I am ready to get started, especially since I was a little slightly delayed. Um, quick rundown again is that um, you can get all of the materials to make tonight's projects minus any teeny tiny embellishments um, with a $35 order. There is not a host code tonight. So if you order between tonight and Sunday night at midnight and you fill out the form and you say I ordered, then I will um, look you up, verify your order, and I will ship out your materials in the next week or so. If you spend $50 or more, you earn a free gift from me. So let me put this quick little graphic up. If you have a phone available, you can scan that QR code and reserve your kit right there. If not, I can put the link in later in the comments. Let's see. Okay. So let me go ahead and move my screens around. Okay. Try to make sure I can see what's on here. So the very first card we're going to make is going to use a really fun stamp set that is only available online. So this is an online exclusive. It's not in any of our paper catalogs. And um, while you might see the note that say there are dies, the dies have sold out already. Um, so you can get the stamp set, but you cannot buy the dies right now. And um, let's get started. I am going to use a little bit of the wild wheat as well as um, my memento ink, which I have in a different stamp pad here. So move some things around. I do have a thick basic white card base, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And I will go ahead and I'm not going to fold this up yet because I'm going to do some stamping directly on here. And I'm going to move some things around so that I make sure you can see everything. There we go, you can see the bottom now, perfect. So we're gonna put a little bit of grass with the new in color wild wheat. Hi, Karin. A variety of stamp sets today. Some you may have, some you may not. Some are on the last chance, some are even marked down. So keep your eyes open. I will let you know which ones are which. I've not really used this yet, so I'm just gonna kind of move my stamp around on the ink pad there. Um, and I'm gonna put the grass at the bottom. And I am gonna do this in a couple of heights. And I'm gonna overlap so that I have a decent amount of grass down here for my rhinoceros. Okay, so I have my grass ready to go there, and while I have this one out, I'm going to do our sentiment, which is, hope your birthday is wild, and I am putting that on this little two by two thick white square. Excellent. We'll move that aside get this out of the way. All right, so now I'm going to use my memento. Oh, no, that is definitely not memento. See, if you read these, you would know. <laughs> this is my memento. There's no writing here. So I do want just that basic black ink. And I have used the memento refill on this one because I prefer the foam pad over the cloth pad for some of my items. So this is one of them. Very simple 
to stamp. We're going to stamp him on this gray. And then we're going to color in just a couple little pieces. And then we will cut him out. And uh, yeah, sorry. One last little bit of stamping is this teeny tiny little bird. And I'm going to use the new Boho Blue. This is one of our markers. And it's small enough. I'm just coloring with my marker and stamping it on here. I am going to cut him out as well. This is where you call me a little crazy because, you know, I'm going to cut out this teeny tiny little blue bird. But I'm not going to cut him out just quite yet. And while I have this out, I am going to go ahead and color my little bird here blue. And we're going to use the Pebbled Path color to color in his, um, his toenails as well as his horn. I am using the fabulous new fine line side. This um, is more like a felt tip pen than they were in the past. And so I really have been enjoying using these. And I did not color the horn in 100%, just to give it a little interest there, a little shine, a little texture. So now we're gonna cut this out and put it together. Tonight's cards are all fairly super simple cards with minimal uh, challenges. Most of them are stamps, ink, and paper. So not a huge amount of products. And I am going to just kind of move where I'm comfortable cutting around him. I am leaving a little teeny tiny border. And I wanted you to see how quick and easy this was, so I did not prep this ahead of time. There are there were die cuts for this. Again, they are sold out, so I wanted to make sure you saw how easy it can be to fussy cut. It's not super hard, and it didn't take me very long at all to get that uh, settled. Okay. So he's going to go here and let's fussy cut this bird. So I am simply, again, I'm going to leave a lot of white border because this is teeny tiny. Um, so I'm just kind of giving a little bit of shape around the bird itself. And he's going to sit in the grass over here. And then we're going to put our sentiment up here. So this is what we're going to put together. You can tell, very super simple. We're going to use, uh, I'm going to use glue. You can use whatever you have nearby for the first layer. And then we're going to pop the whole thing up on dimensionals. We're also going to put the dino and our teeny tiny little bird is going to go up on dimensionals as well. I'm actually going to cut this one in half. Half there and the other half up here. And 
and get a teeny tiny one from the edge for my teeny tiny little bird. We do have many dimensionals, but I have them put away right now. I don't have them out. Um, but if you have the minis, sometimes they are perfect for your project. So we're going to put him here in the grass. All right, my fingers do not work like they used to, so I am going to pick these off a different way. Put this right here. And that one came off. I'm going to put him down here in the grass on the edge. And now I can fold this over and I can make this edge pretty crisp from the back without damaging anything on the front. So here is card number one. Hope your birthday is wild. You could put some ribbon on here. Um, you could add a few different embellishments. Um, what do I have? I think I'm going to put some of these on here. These are the classic matte dots and I still have some. I do not know if these are available. So let's see. So there are some dots on there. A little bit of extra frou frouiness on there. Okay. Card number one. Ooh. I'm trying not to make a giant mess today because my room is a mess with the changeover of the catalog. So, um, if I take a second longer, I apologize if I'm, if I'm too boring. All right, I'm gonna move card number one out of the way and pull over card number two. Okay, card number two is going to feature the uniquely artistic stamp set. And I'm excited to finally get to use this because I love it but I have not had the opportunity to play with this a whole lot. So you're gonna play with me for the first time and we are going to use um, Moody Mauve because that goes really well with our black. So we're gonna have black, white, and this Moody Mauve color. And I'm looking for the greetings that I'm featuring tonight. Okay. So the remaining three cards have a greeting from the go-to greetings because I have one, two, three different happy birthdays. So we're going to use all three of those this evening. So that's where this one came from. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I am going to, oh, and I was gonna say, this is on clearance for 1260. So if you want that, go grab it. Add to cart, add to cart. Okay, so we're gonna do Moody Mauve for these pieces and we're gonna overlay with these fine lines. So we're gonna completely be artistic in our playing as well. So, I did not get these completely set up beforehand. I don't think that's going to hold us back at all. I am mounting these on these nice acrylic blocks. What number are these? Letter are these? These are I, block I. It's a really nice um, size without being too, too big. So I'm going to go from the bottom up on this card. All right. 
Here we go. Moody Mauve. Let's take a look. Is she pretty? I sure hope so. All right. So. And this card is going to go in this direction. So I'm going to do a couple of second generation stamps because Moody Mob actually looks a little dark too. Not bad. Might do a couple of light and a couple of dark. And you have to remember, this is one of those artsy ones, so it's gonna, it's not gonna be a super perfect, perfect um, design, so to speak. It's gonna have some variegation in the stamps, and you're really gonna see a difference when I add the next layer. So. If you're like me, you're looking at this going, ooh, that's kind of ugly. I don't know. I'm just kidding. I know that's the process. Ah, a process where I wear the ink. Okay, so now we're going to use our detail piece and add some of the artsy lines to the top. And they are clear photopolymer, so they go on quite nicely. I can see through to the background, so I can line it up pretty well. <laughs> and it, I'm going to have to hold it closer so you can really see because on my screen, it just looks like a black blob, but when you see it up close, it's really kind of cool. So I will um, I'll hold it up in a moment. And we're going to use it, uh, the Moody Mob, for the sentiment as well. So you'll see how it works with a rubber stamp line writing versus this um, artsy type of color. Uh, stamp set. Okay. Pull that aside. So so here's what it looks like up close. And here's where I overlapped them a little bit. But I think in the end it's going to be pretty cool. So, we are going to grab some Moody Mauve ribbon. And I am just going to do um, a layer across right here. This is an interesting texture ribbon. That's exactly what it's called, textured ribbon. All right, so I'm going to turn this over, and now I'm going to break out, sorry about all the noise, my Stampin' Seal so I can add a little bit of seal to the back of this to hold that ribbon in place until I get... Um, until I get it mounted onto the background. Of course, I would put it too high. We're just going to bring that down a little bit. This is real life, folks. All right, it's nice and straight for the most part. Fold that over, fold that over, much better. Okay, so now I'm going to put this layer up on dimensionals. Put a few of these on here so it's nice and stable. I'm actually going to add a little bit more to the corners. Thank you. 
All right. I am going to put this onto a black layer. I am making a mess. Making a mess. It's what I do best. Actually, I'm pretty good at cleaning my mess. Just not right now. Okay, so let's add this here. Just centered on there. Our ribbon is held in place. And now I'm going to go back to using my glue. I'm going to add it to this card base that I did not prep yet, so we're going to do that now. Just pushing that out of the way. And make sure it's going in the right direction. Okay, so have multiple layers there. This camera angle is not doing it um, any justice. I just apologize for that. All right, let's see if we like Moody Mauve with our happy birthday. Beautiful. So. There it is. Much better than the big flat surfaces. I'm sure it works differently with different uh, types of um, inks and whatnot. And I am just going to flag these ends and then I will mount this on dimensionals on top of that ribbon. There we go. And I'm going to kind of go above and below because I want it to stick to the paper as much as it will and not just that ribbon. So it'll kind of be half on the ribbon, half off the ribbon. And we're covering up all the dark area right here anyway, so that worked out well as well. Let's do it like this. I like it centered. Okay, and now I'm going to add black matte dots, which I used this week. So let me grab some of those. The black matte dots may be sold out at this point, but if you've gotten some, you are lucky, lucky, lucky. So I'm going to add some of these. I am not having great luck today with all of my sticky stuff. Turn over. There we go. Uh, well, we are not demonstrating this very well. I think I slid one of my pieces off. Yep, there we go. So let me see. This is what happens when you cut it into tiny little strips. Sometimes uh, you make a big mess trying to get things off. right here. So card number two, which let's see if I can get a good view of it. Maybe when I photograph it, it'll come out better. I could have done a very, very light color on the back as well, but not terrible. Not too disappointed. All right. Card number two. Set you aside.
And let's move on to card number three. All right, I did do some prep work for card number three already. So card number three, again, is using that um, go-to greetings with all of those fabulous different happy birthdays. And that's what that is for. I am using Pacific Point, which is a retiring color but I absolutely love it. So we're going to use it. And I am going to show for those of you that did not get one of our stamping platforms, we're going to use this ginormous stamping block today. Uh, I always forget their, no, their alphabet letters. This is block F. It is the largest solid block that we sell. And we're going to use Timeless Tiles. This is a background stamp that we do still have available. And I'm going to share a small secret. So sometimes when your stamps come in, they are not centered on the rubber. And even though this design has edges, I am going to trim closely around this because what happens is if I push too hard, I'm going to get ink here and it's going to end up on my papers. So you do not have to be afraid to trim around your, uh, your images. So you can see I trimmed that, not a big deal. I know what this stamp looks like. It's a background stamp. It's not a precision placement stamp. So I am simply getting rid of the room for smudges and a bunch of um, excess ink where I don't want it. And this edge is not so bad, but let me go ahead and even this up. All right, I have a couple little hanging pieces here. I definitely don't want that to make a mess. All right, done. So now I'm just simply going to place this on the block and I'm gonna turn it over and just kind of push it down a little bit. So now I know where the edge of my trimming is, is actually the block. This piece of paper, fits all the way in. So once I ink this up, I should have no problem with this right here. Now, I am going to say that with a background stamp, there are times you will have gaps and you want to make sure that you have firm pressure all around. Um, so I will remind everybody that paper has two sides. So if I make a mistake, I may just turn it over and try it again. This is one of those um, types of sets or stamps where if I do too much of a mistake, I may grab a new piece of paper, just depends on what's happening. So I am making sure that I have inked up this entire background stamp well enough. So it's nice and moist and ready to go. And now I'm just going to turn this over and place it. And I am going to kind of press just to make sure the whole thing gets covered. When I lift this up, my paper is likely going to be stuck at the bottom. I am going to attempt to lift it up and then just, oh, it stayed down today. All right because I was getting prepared for it. So here is what this layer looks like. So beautiful. I just love it. We'll move this aside. 
And we're going to put that on this layer right here. Now, this is that um, polka dot uh, basics 3D embossing folder that is not available right now. However, if you order a kit or you shop through me, you will get a piece of this embossed ready to go. So I'm going to simply add some glue to this because I'm going to put it on my background here. And because it does have peaks and valleys here, I am using the glue to make sure that I can properly adhere this to my layer. I am gonna center this and it is just a tone on tone. And that's essentially what this is going to be. Now, I did not do this straight. I don't know if it matters to me. I'm trying to determine if I want to trim it down and have a smaller, a smaller layer. Watch. Sometimes these things will bug you. Sometimes they won't. There are no, there are no card police. However, I really did want it to be fairly square and I didn't think about that. I could have done it a little bit larger, but the good news is I have a fabulous trimmer and I am just lining up the blade where it will cut this into a nice uh, rectangle for me. And then I'll just have a larger border on the outside and a smaller tile on the middle. So if you're worried about the size of your tiles and you want them to be nice and square, um, you can do that. So I'm going to prop these up on dimensionals. And then we will do our sentiment. And this one, again, super simple, just a little bit of paper and ink and dimensionals, of course. So it looks like I can get about four dimensionals on here before I have to empty it. So I'm just gonna put that in the middle. And then our sentiment is gonna go across and I could put that at an angle, but I think I'm gonna keep it straight across. So I will put dimensionals on the end and a little bit of glue in the middle once I get this stamped. So here is the largest happy birthday from that stamp set. Tap, 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 and then tap it on your paper. Firm pressure, but I'm not wobbling and I'm not doing anything too fancy there. So here is that. So much fun. So again, I'm going to put dimensionals on the outside edges and a little bit of glue across the center because that's where it's going to touch the timeless tile background. Right like this. And the white is actually in line with our border here. And then I am going to put some flashy rhinestones on this one. So add a little bit of sparkle. Get my putty in the right place this go round. All right. And 
this one's tricky, but I think I'm going to do that. Okay, so card number three. Let's see all of that. That was fun. Probably not on your end. It looked a little cuckoo over here, I'm sure. But, I mean, this is fun for me. I hope it's fun for you. Let's work on card number four, which is, again, going to use our retiring Pacific point and our go-to greetings. We will use the last happy birthday for our go-to greetings. And I have this all pre-cut. We're just assembling. Um, we, I'm using an embossed circle background, a non-embossed white, my Pacific Point um, cardstock, basic white for a layer and some of the um, Pacific Point 6x6 DSP that is also going out. So I'm going to go ahead and start assembling. This is the four and a quarter by 11 scored at five and a half. And this is going to be the direction that this one goes. So I have my tape runner out. So I'm going to use stamp and seal because it's right here. And I don't have any texture on this white, so it should stick and hold. And if I don't like where it is, I can lift it quickly and then reposition it. Well, All right, let's see if we can do this without making a ginormous mess. Some days your body parts just don't work as well as the other days. Okay, so I've got this. We're going to put this down. And it is offset to the side. And then we will do this layer is going to go all the way across the five and a half inches. And I'm just kind of sort of centering that as best I can. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and we are going to use that wild wheat color and our Pacific point. I'm going to go ahead and do the happy birthday right down the middle of my circle. And then I'm going to put um, the leaf embellishment above and below in the wild wheat. So this is wild wheat on the top. And then we'll turn it and put wild wheat at the bottom. So a cute little happy birthday. And this came from that artistic, uh, <sighs> uniquely artistic stamp set. So that's what that little, little leaf set came from. And I am going to attach this to my textured circle here, which again was one of those basic 3D embossing folders that are not available, but I will gladly cut a circle for you. So I'm gluing this layer and then I'm gonna pop this on dimensionals. And of course you could continue to add um, a variety of embellishments. You could add a ribbon, could have added some twine to this. Um, I was trying to keep everything very simple today. And I'm kind of centering this over the, um, the edge here. 
And then we're going to add those sparkles to this one as well. All right, so yes, I have a method to a lot of my um, sparkles. So just in case you were wondering, I like to do threes more than I do other things. So this was card number four. Again, super simple stamping. 90% of what I did tonight was just paper and ink. We have some layers. Oh, that one came up again. Let's see. So here are tonight's birthday class cards. Oh, we cannot see them all, I can tell. So one, two, three. Four. Oh, and on this one and this one, you will get to adhere some white for your insides because when you use a very dark paper, you want to make sure that you can still give a greeting on the inside, sign your card, whatever. So I do give you that as well. I hope you enjoyed this birthday class. Uh, let me see here if I can get to the link for my Google form so I can put it in the comments for you to grab. This, 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 okay. So let me add that there. So hopefully you can grab a copy, uh, grab a set of projects, and you'll be able to watch this and create projects. You can use whatever you have at home. Um, again, some of these stamp sets are current, some are going out, so check the website, grab what you need. Um, the go-to greetings is going to be in the catalog for another year, so this is definitely a set that I highly, highly, highly recommend. All right, have a great night. I'll see you soon.